Hi again, everybody. Dr. Lee Coleman, picking up from where we left off. We've talked about Dr. Summit's syndrome and said that children are never going to say they were abused unless they really were abused. And we've learned that Dr. Summit really didn't do any work to have such an opinion. He was hearing it from social workers. So the question became, well, where did they get this idea? So we went to the program at the Santa Clara County Juvenile Probation Department and learned the kind of things that trainees were taught. And Key McFarland, a social worker who at that time was working in the federal government, was part of setting up those programs. And we learned what kind of training was going on. Now let's go and see more of one of the interviews that Key McFarland did in that famous McMartin case. In that previous session, I told you how a child told Key McFarland that kids were being tied up at the school. And when asked how she knew that, she said, well, because her mother thinks that's what happened. And that Key McFarland, instead of doing what any responsible interviewer would do, would help the child understand that we didn't want to talk about what her mother might think, but what she, as a child, had seen. But instead, Key McFarland invited the child to show her how children were being tied up, because her mother had told her, she thought, that children were being tied up. Ponder that for a few minutes, if you will, what kind of irresponsibility we're talking about. So I want to sh give you a little more about what Key McFarland did with that same child. So she asked the child, when you were in school, did anybody ever take your dress off? No. Did, no, did somebody tell you not to talk about it? To which the child nods yes. Yeah? Is that why you have a hard time telling me? Who told you not to talk to me about it? Now let me just stop right there and ask you to think about, did the child ever say, don't talk about it, did the child say that, or did Key McFarland suggest it? Key McFarland suggested it because she said, did somebody tell you not to talk about it? As an explanation. And the child nodded in agreement. Anybody who's got their thinking cap on would realize that if you suggest something to a child, you better be prepared for the possibility that they may go along with what you said. It's called leading the child. You don't do that if you're interested in the truth. But if you think you already know the truth, then it might be very tempting to help the child get to what you're sure is the truth. And that's exactly what Key McFarland did there by suggesting to the child, did somebody tell you not to talk? The child nods her head. So then she said, who told you not to talk? The teacher says, Ray, my teacher Ray. And the Key McFarland says, what did he say? So there is another mistake. Everybody's been talking about Ray Bucky. It's been in the newspapers. He's been accused. He was the only male who was spending time. He was the grandson of the founder. He was there, and his name was being, he was the one who supposedly was doing things. And so anybody should realize this child may, is going to be hearing things. So Key McFarlane has asked the child, did anybody tell you not to tell? The child nods her head. And who was it the child then gives the name that she would have heard about? So she then, instead of asking the child, have you heard other people talk about Mr. Ray? She just says, what did he say? So now she's made her third mistake. Key McFarland, with three sentences, has made three mistakes. And she now says, well, tell me what he said. So that she's putting a demand on the child. Oh, now I know that he has been telling you not to tell, that somebody's been telling you not to tell. Now we know 
that he, that's what he did was tell you not to tell. Now, what did he tell you? And the child says, I don't know. Now, wouldn't you think that a responsible interviewer would say to themselves, well, I wonder if the child saying they don't know is because maybe he never did that. After all, I suggested to the child that maybe somebody did that. And how do I know that, in fact, this is all legitimate? So the, the child says, I don't know. Now Key McFarland keeps on going. Did he say what would happen to you if you talked to me? What did he say? Child, I don't know. Twice in a row, the child has said, I don't know. Well, inter the, the Key McFarland says, well, what do you think would happen? Do you think something bad would happen if you talked to me? Now, I submit to you that we've now moved to what I talked about in previous sessions. Now, Key McFarland is becoming a child abuser. She's not only a terrible interviewer to try to find out the truth. There's no way the truth can come out of this. But she's now suggesting to the child maybe something would bad would happen to her if she talks. So at the same time, this unlicensed social worker, she's not licensed to do anything therapeutic in a clinical sense. She's suggesting to the child that something bad might happen to her if she does the very thing that she's asking her to do. She's saying, tell me what he said to you, even though maybe he said something would bad would happen if you did it. And let me tell you, I've studied thousands of hours of that exact same thing. Interviewers prodding and cajoling and encouraging and sweet-talking children to say things which they, there's no indication they actually have a memory of such things happening, and at the same time asking them if they're afraid that they might get hurt for saying it. And I submit that is child abuse perpetrated by people who are being paid to protect children from abuse. So the child again says, she's already said, I don't know what he said. She never had anything to say like that in the first place. Only Kim McFarland suggested it. She's now twice said, I don't know what he said. And then Kim McFarland says, you can show with the dolls and you don't even have to talk. The child then said she didn't want to talk anymore. So Key McFarland began to talk through a hand puppet. She's got the hand puppet on, and she is acting like she's that animal talking. So she says, it's not nice to have somebody naked. It's not my fault somebody made me. Who did? And the child said, he did. Who? Somebody made her? The child did not respond. So here's what McFarland did. She went on. Show me with the dolls if you saw anybody's dick at school. Think about that one. The child says, no. Try. If you can tell me I'm an OK person to tell, then you won't have to tell again. And the child said, I remember climbing on the slide. Key McFarland said, that's good. You can show me with the dolls. Put it on a movie. And it, in mother's Key McFarland means we're recording you. We're making a movie. She used to like to tell the kids, if you tell me the yucky secret, it will go into the microphone and through the wire into the camera, and then you won't have it anymore. You'll feel better because the yucky secret will go away. So now let's go back to the transcript. You can try. You can tell me I'm an OK person to tell. Then you won't have to tell again. I remember climbing on the slide. That's good. You can show me with the dolls. Put it on a movie, and anybody who wants to know can watch the movie. This will be Ray. 
And then the child said, pull his pants up, because the dolls already had had the pants taken off. And there was actually a penis and testicles and pubic hair on the dolls. That's part of these new techniques they developed. Pull, and the child said, pull his pants up. And Key McFarland says, what are their kids? So maybe that's enough. I don't want to spoil your breakfast or your dinner because it certainly spoiled plenty of mine. And uh, I'm sorry, folks. This is not, for me, the kind of situation where I want to be Mr. Cool. I've never tried to hide the way this kind of stuff impacts on me, whether I'm in court or not. If I see somebody being abused, whether it's out on the street or in the office of an interviewer, I'm not going to pretend like it's not affecting me. I hope you, I, I don't really care if you adopt a style like that. It's your business. What I hope for is that you don't get fooled into thinking that the emotion that I'm quite happy to show when I'm confronted with that impacts you in your evaluation. That's what I want. I want you to be taking this material and evaluating it. Because I think if enough people understand what's going on, we have some chance to change things. We have no chance. The professionals have dug in their heels. People who have done this kind of thing have gotten more awards, more citations, more commendations than you can throw a stick at. Because they have protested and still get trained. They do the same kind of training. Too many, not enough people know what's going on, and so we keep funding them to do the same kind of things. The way that you can help is, first of all, think and listen and study. Take what I'm telling you and follow up on it. Keep coming to these sessions and get other people to come. Let's see if we can generate some kind of movement to make some change in this new form of child abuse of those children who have not been abused but who are influenced to come to believe they have put into therapy that demands of them that they talk about things that never really happened, but they, now they believe happened, while at the same time protecting children who have been abused. We need resources to do so many things in the society, and one of them is services for people who have been abused all kinds, whether it's an adult rape victim or a child sexual assault victim or any other kind of victim. We need resources for all of it. We don't need to be sending people falsely convicted to prison and spending our resources for that. And I have seen how many people have been sent to prison and are continuing to be sent who are innocent of the things they're being charged with because of this kind of methodology. Thanks you very much for coming. Hope you bring lots of friends, and I'll see you next time.